Hi guys, I'm Anna Omagu. I'm Mark Duffy. And I'm Kiana Marsh. Welcome back to Study Break. Study Break is a talk show at Fordham University about all things pop culture. This season, we're back with more exciting guests, fun events, and hot topics. Stay tuned for more. For today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Super Bowl last Sunday. The New England Patriots and the Los Angeles Rams faced off for Super Bowl 53. The Patriots ended up winning, beating them 13-3, giving them their sixth win ever. This ties them with the Pittsburgh Steelers for the most Super Bowl wins of all time. Joining us today is Chris Baccia, a commentator for WFUV Sports, to break down what happened at the game. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so let's get started. Um, we heard this year's Super Bowl was the lowest scoring game ever. Um, yes. How do you think the Patriots only managed to score one touchdown? Well, you know, they didn't really bring it the way that they always have. Of course, they've been five Super Bowls before this with Tom Brady, and uh, those have been high-scoring games. So it, it tells me that this Patriot team wasn't as good as those teams, um, and, and they, I don't want to say got lucky, but they ran into the Rams, who are an inexperienced team. You know, their head coach, Sean McVay, 33 years of age. They have a second-year quarterback in Jared Goff. This team really wasn't ready to take down the Patriots. Uh, so that's why you saw such a low scoring game, uh, but ultimately a competitive game at the end of the day, and that's really all you could ask for. Do you think the low score made it a boring game? Because I know a lot of people were saying that it wasn't as exciting as past Super Bowls. Right, right. Well, I don't, you know, I don't really see it that way. I, I understand where that comes from. You know, we want to see the fireworks. We want to see the shootout, but um, you know, you, you can only ask for a close game. It was you know one score game for almost the entire game. Ended up being a ten point game at the end of the day. But uh, the Rams were in it all the way through, and I thought it was you know, Super Bowl. Yeah. It doesn't get better than that. There's some discussion over whether Tom Brady, who's forty one now, will retire after winning his and the right. Patriots' sixth Super Bowl. He's also won the most Super Bowls of any NFL player in history. So do you think it's time for him to step down, or are we going to see a few more seasons with him? We're going to see a few more seasons out of Tom Brady. Uh, he, he'll, he'll play as long as he wants to play. He has that mandate. He is the best quarterback to ever play this game. Six Super Bowls. He's been there nine times. You can talk about the accolades uh, for days. This guy uh, will get an extension this offseason because the indication here is that he wants to play. I think the real question is about Rob Gronkowski, the tight end, who's now won a couple Super Bowls with the Pats. Uh, and he'll probably go down as the best tight end in history, too. Um, and he's really changed that position forever. Uh, but Rob Gronkowski may retire. He's considering it. We've heard that. People are saying that Tom Brady wasn't as, at his best, which you kind of noted. Mm -hmm. So do you think that this was a good game for him? I know that there were other star players who right. kind of um, were highlights of the game, like Julian Edelman, who mm -hmm. actually won the MVP. Yeah. So do you think that he deserved it, or do you think this was – what do you think? Well, I thought they made the right, the right selection. Um, Brady only threw for 260 yards, uh, just one touchdown and interception. So, he, you know, he wasn't really lighting it up out there, but Julian Edelman caught 10 passes, 140 yards. He was all over the place, constantly open. Um, and what a story that that young man is coming out of Kent State. That's a sixth round pick as a quarterback. Um, and Bill Belichick, who we haven't even mentioned, found him, developed him into a wide receiver. But I thought Edelman was the right, the right pick. That's really interesting. I didn't know that. Um, well, thank you for coming on the show today. Yeah, thanks thank for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And be sure to check out Chris's show, One on One with WFUV, every Saturday. As we all know, the best part of any Super Bowl is the commercials. This year did not disappoint with a number of memorable ads. There were literally so many good commercials, we had a lot of trouble narrowing it down. But today we're going to be reacting to some funny, heartwarming, and downright strange ads that we saw last weekend. Hello. Good to see you again. Likewise. Love her jacket. She looks beautiful. Cool outfit, actually. I'll have the but same. I'll have the same. I'll have the same. Oh, they were bringing the Cosmo. Oh, you're a star, Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Oh. She hasn't aged at all. No. Yeah, she looks so good. The dude. Oh, my God. No, here, give me a star. Butter was comfy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love how like, he's wearing such a casual outfit in such a like cool situation. Good choice. Well, changing can do a little good. Yeah, good it's an odd pairing, but I, I think it works. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to 
to the 100th season of the National Football League. Tonight is not about the league. It's about football. I think it's interesting that the NFL advertises during their own like. It's about yeah. The, <laughs> space. Yeah. the fans. The moment. And everything else. I don't get what he was trying to do right there. Yeah, like, yeah, he's just gonna grab the cake. Is he planning on grabbing the cake? This looks like so much fun. I mean, fun if you're like a large six, yeah, seven, of course, one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it would not be too much fun for me. This must have cost a lot to produce just I know. based on the. All the different people that they were creating yeah. for us. Yeah, they just crashed this in. And also, how did yeah. they choreograph it? Or do you think they just totally did this? Are they just organic? Like, yeah. Yeah. This is what they do. <laughs> I mean, it could be. Lots of big names in this. A lot of big names. And I guess names. if it's an NFL commercial. Even I recognize them. Me and too. I, I don't know anything about football. I think even as a non NFL football viewer, it still is interesting. Yeah. It's a lot of action. It's engaging. Yeah, lots of chaos. I wonder, like, where this venue was. Like, I feel bad if this is all their, like, like genuine <laughs> furniture. <laughs> I think it's how football parties go, like galas. This is what, like, yeah. I like it bringing together generations, so kind of. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, um, it is a good commercial yeah. for what we do. A lot of different generations of football players. That's a nice touch. Mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting end. Who is she? I don't know who yeah, she is. Yeah, I don't know who she is. Thank you for NFL. It's very much on brand, I would say. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I coach a team with a lot of elite athletes, and they're very talented. And they get a lot of attention. But you guys are elite as well. You don't do it for contracts. You don't do it for the fame. You know, and you're not celebrities. Mm -hmm. You get called away from your families constantly. And they never know if you're coming back home. You guys are I think that they're yours. getting recognition because a lot of the times, they, obviously you there are no commercials. But in 2005, yeah, I was in a horrible car accident. And they, they told me yeah. that I flew 45, 50 feet in the air. I promise you I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the first responders. I love how genuine it is as well. And it connects football to these people shows just like in everybody's life. Yeah. Not just random yeah. stories you read about, but you know, everybody knows his coach. I think it's really special too that they connected him with the, mm -hmm. the actual people who were on the scene. Yeah. You can feel how emotional it is for yeah. him in this moment. Yeah, definitely a lot of raw emotion. I've often thought about you know, who showed up that night and who was there. I never thought I'd see I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. They said I had to have some angels with me that night to survive. I believe that. Yeah. I believe you guys are angels. Definitely a very powerful It's very... Yeah. I think it's very effective. I think it was like a genius marketing strategy on their end. Definitely. To, to connect that, like making the call to and the kind of, first responders. Yeah, Exactly. It's it pulls out everybody's heartstrings yeah. and everybody kind of, because it's something that's universal. Yeah, like fire something fighters, everybody can understand. Everybody can understand how important they are. Yeah, yeah. it's really touching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's all experience something. She's so beautiful. No, not fair. Together. It like kind of sends chills down my back, yeah. but like I. I mean, I like her voice. Feel it. She I mean, definitely has a voice for it. Yeah. yeah. Where are they? I know. I, I would love know. to know. I wonder where they filmed this. It looks like they like, Iceland oh, or something. Yeah. This beer, so pure, you can taste it. You know, I usually like do not like it as much, but for whatever reason, I am fascinated by this commercial. It really is capturing my attention. Like, the, the sizzling is so sizzling, good. Yeah. There's not too much going on, but I think that's kind of the yeah. beauty of it. Yeah. It's at, like had just the right amount of yeah. like Yeah, and it's being just the right the right it's amount of like more. meme culture, Instagram culture. Yeah, exactly. It was and just like relevant it. enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like it. And then you put Zoe Kravitz in there. Beautiful. I think yeah. she was a good choice, honestly, <laughs> yeah. for it.
I mean, her voice was soothing. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, it was it very calming. Very yeah. made me very relaxed. I know. <laughs> Already. It's like one of my Instagram pictures. Like. <laughs> I like Andy Warhol a lot. I, I do not like his ad. It's just, it just feels pointless. I don't, I just, I think it's such lazy, like, marketing to yeah, just take footage that you already have and mm -hmm. just turn it into a commercial. I think it's what it, it is generating a conversation about it, though. Which yeah. is kind of what they want. It's yeah. like interesting it's enough. So much ketchup. I know. <laughs> like a ridiculous <laughs> amount. And then he, like, dips it in. I know. It doesn't really, it just doesn't like fit Burger King's brand. Yeah. And it also doesn't make me crave burgers. Yeah. Well. Like, I don't want to exactly. eat like Andy. I don't want to dip my burger in the ketchup. I don't want to eat, exactly. eat it like that. Yeah. I don't want a burger right now. It just, I don't know, not as effective for me. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. But thank you again for watching. Yes, thanks you guys, and thank you to Chris for coming on to our show. We'll see you next time on Study Break. In the meantime, make sure to follow all our social media accounts to keep up to date on all things pop culture and Fordham related. Bye! Bye.